So here's a cool surprise. Yesterday, Platinum Games announced that they're working on a Legend of Korra game, and I actually got the chance to play it for a little while yesterday morning. If you ask me, Platinum is the undisputed king of character action games. Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising are among my two favorite action games ever, and it's part of why this announcement's so exciting for a lot of people, I think. The Avatar series, whatever, franchise, I don't know what to call it, is fundamentally about martial arts, and that's part of what makes Platinum seem like pretty much the perfect fit for a game like this. So a quick word on the story in this Legend of Korra game. The game takes place between books two and three of the show. I'll avoid giving away any spoilers for the current run, but some significant events unfold at the end of book two, and those events play directly into the state of the world in this game. The story is actually being co-written by Tim Hedrick, who worked on both the original Avatar series and on book two of Korra, but interestingly, the main villain was co-designed by the studio and Platinum themselves, and the producer I spoke to hinted that when you see the final boss, you will, quote, have no question that this is a Platinum game, which is a super exciting thing to hear. I would actually go even further and say that from the moment you start playing Legend of Korra, you have absolutely no question this is a Platinum banger, because dude, it really, really feels like one of their games. And notably, it's directed by Eero Shirahama, who is the lead designer on Anarchy Reigns, and who also did design work on Mad World. The controls are pretty standard character action with a couple of twists. X is jump, square is weak attack, triangle is strong attack, and circle does taunts and finishers. The right trigger does all your dodges and cancels, and then depending on your timing, the left trigger will either block an attack or counter it if you hit it at the very last second. That block counter system actually works a lot like the witch time system that you might remember from Bayonetta, which is part of what makes this feel so platinum-y to me. The bumpers are reserved for switching bending schools, and yes, water bending, fire bending, earth bending, and air bending are all present and accounted for. Appropriately enough, Korra's bending skills are the main thing that set this game apart from the rest of Platinum's character action library. You can switch between unlocked bending schools at any time, even mid-combo, and they all have various strengths and weaknesses. Water bending is the weakest school, but is largely projectile-based and can therefore hit distant or elevated enemies. Earth Earthbending is the slowest but most powerful and has plenty of knockups for starting huge aerial combos. Firebending is a short range melee focused skill set which is sort of centered around high speed attacks and long combos. And then lastly, airbending is kind of your all around style which has decent ranged attacks, good area of effect spells, and then some advanced stuff like knockups and dash throughs. The animations are fantastic and hugely evocative of the show with all the badass strafing and flipping and shooting spells that you've come to expect from watching Legend of Korra. There's also a whole system built around charge moves. Charge attacks not only make the move more powerful, but builds up a meter that increases your overall damage and attack range, which is meant to incentivize using them throughout combos. It also looks awesome because, as you know from the show, they'll be charging up like a big water or fire spell like this and then firing it. So it actually makes the combat look a lot more like what we've come to expect from the show. You might notice that I keep using the word system a lot, which is probably a relief to any Platinum fans worried that this would end up being a dumbed down version of one of their past games. The producer at Platinum who I spoke to mentioned that they've gone to great lengths to ensure that this is a game that any fan of Korra can enjoy, but they plan on providing three difficulty levels, with the middle difficulty being tailored to folks already familiar with third-person action games. So in short, I'm coming away super intrigued and interested in this Legend of Korra game. It's an interesting fit for Platinum, who's never really done like a short 4-5 to five hour $15 downloadable experience before, but that's part of what makes it so intriguing. Um, there's also something that I have to mention before we go any further, which is that there's a pro-bending mode in the game. Um, because we don't have any footage to show you, I'm not going to go into too much depth, but if you have questions, I'll be hanging out in the comments and telling you about how awesome it is to do the pro-bending activities alongside Mako and Bolin and just... It seems like they took one of the coolest parts of the show and threw that in as an additional minigame, which is a nice idea. But yeah, any questions about Legend of Korra, again, I'll be hanging out in the comments down below, so just scroll down and throw them at me and I'll let you know what I thought. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.